my broad ecological interest is how disturbance affects uh, communities and uh, particularly the diversity of those communities. And so one of the disturbances that um, occurs in the marsh systems here is uh, seagrass rack. My research is on the effects of seagrass rack on the salt marsh community. And when we're talking about rack, what we're talking about is this stuff right here. Um, even when you're on the beach and you look at the high tide line and you see a bunch of seagrass or seaweed or other brick of back washed up in a line right there, that's what rack is. I selected eight sites in St. Joe Bay, four of which we also have three quadrants that have data for Randall's genetic diversity survey so we can tie it in with that potentially in the future. Rack is a natural occurrence and it happens when the plants just shed or slough off their leaves. In around August or early September, at the end of summer basically, there will be a large amount of seagrass rack in the salt marsh naturally. It can also be increased if there's a lot of boating activity and the boats get in too shallow of water and tear up the seagrass. Um, there's certainly anecdotal evidence that when boating activity in the bay increases, so does seagrass rack. <laughs> The way we're looking at what the seagrass rack is doing to the marsh is we're measuring a number of things. We're looking at plant species diversity, so we're seeing if maybe the less dominant plants in the marsh are able to have a positive benefit from the rack creating gaps or blank areas in the marsh they can move into. We're looking at the insects. We're collecting them using sweep nets and bug vacuums to get the large and small insects and find out what the rack does to their abundance and diversity. And we're also looking at the marine invertebrates using pitfall traps and minnow traps, as well as uh, counting snails that are in our permanent quadrant. Mm -hmm.